Okay, we've been uh, re-examining permutation type problems where all the objects involved are not necessarily distinct so that we have a permutation with a certain amount of repeats and in this video we're going to use the formula that we developed in previous videos to solve this kind of problem and also we're going to use the combination approach and here's the problem it has three different parts to it um, we know that a bit is either a 0 or a 1 so suppose that a 6 bit string is formed and first question how many different 6 bit strings can we make that have only one numeral 1 in them how many different 6 bit strings can we have that have two numeral ones and how many 6 bit strings can we make where the two ones are adjacent to each other. Now, the first question here probably seems pretty obvious. If we think of it here, are okay, I could have a string where one is here, that would be one possible string, or another string where the one is positioned here, or another string where the one is positioned here, and so forth. So clearly the answer to the first question is 6. And again, when we're solving these problems, even for simple ones, it's always good to try to draw at least a crude diagram. But let's approach now the same problem with a more analytical approach to it. Let's use our formula for permutation with repeats. Because what we have here is, well, we have six numbers. Total. Five of them are zeros. And one of them is the numeral one. So when we're asking ourselves how many different six-bit strings can we make, that have only one numeral one in them, that would be the same thing as asking, well, if these six numbers total, we have five zeros and a one, how many unique ways can we promote these numbers? We know the formula for that. That's equal to six factorial divided by five factorial, and just divided by one, so we'll leave it like this. And of course, this just equals 6, because the numerator is 6 times 5 factorial, and the denominator has 5 factorial, so the answer is 6, as we will readily determine just by drawing a crude diagram. But let's now also approach this problem as a combination problem. Here we can think of it again as we have six positions and we're going to, how many ways can we select six positions to accommodate our single numeral one? And the answer to that is this. And this is equal to six factorial divided by 6 minus 1 is 5 factorial times 1 factorial which is just 1 and again we get the same answer 6 so to answer the first question a simple diagram answers it for us but also we were able to answer it by using our permutation with repeats formula and also with the combination approach now what about the second question how many six-bit strings, different six-bit strings, will contain two numeral ones? So here, we can think of it again as a permutation problem. There are six numbers total. And now we are going to have 
four zeros and two ones. So the number of permutations that we can make with these numbers, that will tell us the number of different six-bit strings that have exactly two ones. And we know what that is. That's six factorial divided by four factorial times two factorial. And this equals the numerator, six factorial is six, times five times four factorial divided by four factorial and that's just two so that equals 15 no problem there now we want to see can we also answer the same question again as we did in the previous video and in the previous part here, can we also answer this using a combination approach? So let's see what we have. We have six slots available. We want to know what are the total number of ways that we can choose two of them. I'm going to use those two for the numeral one. So here we have C six two. And this is equal to 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 2 is 4 factorial times 2 factorial. So this equals 6, oops, 6 times 5 times 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 2 equals 15. So once again, the combination approach gives us the same answer as the formula when we were considering it as a permutation problem with repeats. Now finally, we want to ask but try to answer this question. How many six different six bit strings can have the ones where they are adjacent to each other? And again, this one is simple enough that we could probably answer just by drawing some crude diagrams. We have the ones adjacent to each other. We could have it like this. There they are adjacent to each other or it could be here they are adjacent to each other or it could be there the ones are adjacent to each other or it could be Finally, we could have, so again, just by drawing a crude diagram, we can see there are one, two, three, four, five ways that we can create the six bit strings where the ones are adjacent to each other. But again, let's try and use a um, more analytic approach. What we do is, since the ones are never separated, there's two of them, and the ones are never separated. Now here, we have six numbers total. There are four zeros. And there are two ones. Where to make this so we don't get confused. But these two ones, since they're never separated, we treat them as one object. So if we're thinking of this now as a permutation problem with repeats, then we don't have six numbers total, we have five total numbers. We're treating the ones as if they're just one number, the two ones. 
because they're never separated, so we treat them as one object. So we don't have six numbers total, now we have five numbers total, divided by the number of repeats, we have four zeros, and now the two ones, they're just together as one object, so of course that's just one factorial, so this is equal to five times four factorial divided by four factorial times one equals five. So here then we could also solve this part of the problem by using a more analytic approach. It was simple enough that we could just draw some diagrams to answer it, but clearly if we had a more complicated problem we'd probably be better off going with a more analytic approach. And again the key to this is since the ones are adjacent to each other, we have two of them, but we don't count them as two objects. We count them together as one object. Okay, um, that's it for this video. I think we have one more video left. Where we consider these permutations with repeat type problems, how to solve them using our formula that we developed in other videos, and also using the combination approach. So come back and join us for those videos, we'll try and solve some more problems.